Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Kevin, and I actually, this is the first time I've met Hank and Sharon Uloff, and, but they've been on the show before, back when it was hosted by somebody else. And I got to say, I'm already, the energy, it's just light and bu- bubbly is maybe not the right word, but it's kind of how I'm feeling, so I'm just going to go with because it. Because we made you del- stop, start a, a moment late so I could send an email to a client. <laughs> it just gave you more time to charm me. So consider me thoroughly charmed, but let me reintroduce you to our podcast audience. If they had listened to the episode previous, which at this point now has got to be maybe a year and a half ago or so, we've been going for a little while. Sharon and Hank Uloff are business coaches, as you might imagine, authors of a growing number of best-selling books, which we'll get to in a moment, and hold small business breakthrough boot camps several times a year and have hosted hundreds of episodes of a weekly radio show. They focus primarily on marketing, sales, back office systems, and human resources, the four areas where most business owners say they struggle. Welcome. Thank you for sharing some time with me. We're recording this in early December, so a lot of us are all in our like sort of year-end wrap, getting all of our- Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and happy 4th of July. Let's get let's all get all cut up in happy Halloween. <laughs> and how was that Labor Day weekend? It would be hilarious if we were just like, so how was 2024 for everyone? <laughs> Depending on where you're, when you're listening to this. We're the prophets of nostalgia. <laughs> we're looking yeah. back and forward at the same time. Woo, Schrodinger's podcast. Actually, you're, if, well, if, yeah, you're listening, really if, if you're listening, you you are going to want to keep that in mind because we're going to give you guys something free at the end. But that's your tease as to what you're going to have to do in order to get the free stuff. <laughs> we love a good tease. So... Getting away from the tease and getting back into the meat of it, first of all, congratulations on another new best-selling book. Thank you. Let me just open up the floor to you. Talk about it. What's the book about? What was the the impetus for writing it and getting it out there? I open the floor to you. Begin and go wherever you would like. I'll follow along. Okay, so <laughs> book number eight in a continuing series. Actually, the book number eight was supposed to be The Physics of Marketing, which hmm. has been on the whiteboard now for six years. But... I passed high school physics by the skin of my teeth. I didn't even do that. I think I got a C because I made Dr. Paley laugh. But I'd always <laughs> wanted to write a book, still do, still writing it, on how the laws of physics apply to marketing. And we have a co-author, but he's busy. We, our last book was Partners in Everything, which is written for, it's your couple's guide to running a successful business without ruining your life. and that was the first book that had the topic. Yet we've done one on social media and, and HR and marketing tips. Sales. And we thought, thank you, I forgot that one. <laughs> and we said, okay, if we're not going to get the physics book out, we need to do a book in 23. What are we going to do? And we looked at our client base. And just like you're supposed to do when you're putting together a marketing plan, everyone, uh, mm-hmm. you look at your target audience. And our target audience, uh, are overwhelmed overthinkers. Oh, okay. Yep. So me. <laughs> there you go. So we went through all of our content and we started pulling out logs we had written before uh, that had to do with overwhelm and overthinking and how to get around all this. And we had enough for about half a book, like that much. So we wrote the other half and we came up with the marketing checklist for your guide for overwhelmed and overthinking entrepreneurs. I so like this that. Is one, this is for all of those, oh God, I want to do this, but, or what if I do this? Or what if I do all oh, of that? But before I do that, I got to do this first. Yeah. I know you mm-hmm. do. <laughs> yeah. Before I open my business, I have to have a, a logo and a, no, web, and a website no, and a functioning social media program no, and, and a note from my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go get that first client or customer. So this book is designed, it's your, leave this on your desk. And if you're having a day, open it to whatever page. Probably for example, the page you were supposed to read. It. Yes. The, 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 <laughs> most small business owners ask about branding. Oh, wow. That, there, that's a cool chapter. Uh, <laughs> overthinking in your business, what causes it. That's this book. And... And it went bestseller on October 6th. Yes, which was would have been my mom's. 96th birthday. We've had good luck. We have launched three books on what would have been my mom's birthdays, and we've launched two books on our anniversary. So that it's where we're where we go. We have a theme. Yeah. It depends on oh. when it gets launched. Where is it in the cycle during the year? 
Yeah, and we decided in June. Okay, time for a new book. July is too fast. No, can't get. <laughs> I'm sorry, babe. Because <laughs> we have a, we're a coaching team. Yeah. And we have a very definite split of yeah, some of. You, you said duty. I'm I agree. Like, anyway, <laughs> we can bleep it out if you'd like. <laughs> That's all right. The defecate when the defecation is the rotary oscillator, you got to know where to go. And when it comes to Ooh. books, that kind of tends to sit on my desk over there instead of Sharon's desk over there. I design the covers and pull all the content together, and Sharon gets to do the first edit through. So Smart. it's I like. And before we send it to our editor who's done all eight of our books and she's our good luck charm. She, she's made me a much better writer too. That's how it works. It came out mom's birthday, bestseller on that. Happy birthday, mom. Yeah. Happy birthday, mom. And I, I really do in, in my, in my heart of hearts, I just perked up when you said that it was like so, the way you said it's mom's birthday and your anniversary. I was like, that's the kind of stuff I try to do. I've learned to try and do in my life all over in my life is just to align the things that I'm doing with just honoring someone or celebrating someone or something just that little bits of alignment they really do i find that they just make everything else better they're just like the perfect spice the perfect sauce to just be elevating everything that i'm up to the hard part about launching on our anniversary when we do it is that's one of those days we take off and it's very difficult to send out those three, four, hey, this is the day to buy the book, remember to buy the book, remember, the book, and check Amazon to see what we're doing and how we're doing. And yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really difficult to do that when we're off. We were in, let's see which book, it was the Marketing Checklist 2. We were in Winslow, Arizona, because where else do you go on your 25th wedding anniversary, but standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> and street from that corner is a fabulous little diner. Yeah, And that's actually where we were when it hit bestseller. It was really nice. But yeah, that was early enough in the day that it was like, okay, good. I can just put my phone <laughs> away. Yeah. <laughs> so and it honestly, the marketing tip is it gives you another reason to sell it. It's another, it's a reason to celebrate. We're publishing a book and we're celebrating this. And that's, oh, yeah. yeah, it's it's not either or, it's both. And it's not just alignment with your personal and professional lives in a way that sort of celebrates and honors. And yep. it's also just a really good way for people to connect, which is, again, that's more or less what marketing is, just like putting people together. It's what business is, putting people together. And so having that one more open door for people to be like, oh, that's so sweet. And then all of a sudden, yeah. you're, there, you're for, in there. For, for, <laughs> um, for partners and everything. I wanted that to go out on what would have been my parents' anniversary, which was June 10. But as it turns out, I needed the extra month for July 21. So we... Stuff happens. Life happens. Yeah. Yes, of course. Well, speaking well, of life we, happening, I really, why well, it's, I'm still, I don't want to get too far away from the most recent book because I obviously I responded very strongly to that combination of O words. Oh my, overwhelm, over. That's typically overthinking is uh, so frequently how I've gotten myself into trouble. Maybe not overthinking, but an overly, a too great of an emphasis on thinking about things, on getting stuff in the quote unquote right order, which I'm going to put gigantic air quotes around that phrase because <laughs> the right order is the one that gets things off the ground. <laughs> so Kevin, you've never laid awake at night making a list, a checklist, and you oh, no. decided, oh, what the heck, and you rolled over to clicked on the phone and made and wrote it all down you've never done that have you of course not i've had to actually <laughs> remove the phone from the bedroom which is just generally a really good smart thing for me anyway because it's just the attempt if it's right if it's within reach i'm probably in a weaker moment gonna grab for it and then i'll start building that bad habit so i like i leave the pen i leave the paper i leave that stuff away from the bed and that's honestly that little trick right there has helped me so much just on a personal level because then i just I remove one more invitation for me to give in to my lesser angels. Huh. <laughs> I like thinking about things, you know, but they I, don't. I tend to, uh, so the, uh, we have the opposite view. Yeah. So I, I totally get <laughs> No, I totally understand the moving the photo. Yeah. We, we don't do it, but I totally no, get No, no, not a chance. Um, <laughs> but if, if you're not going to have your phone, which is totally fine, blue light, all of those things, we do always have pen and paper, and we talk to our clients about that, too, because too many entrepreneurs, too many people, entrepreneurs are not, too many people, wake up in the middle of the night, 
oh my goodness, did I do, I have to remember to do that. And rather than getting stuck in your head of, oh my goodness, I have to remember, oh, I have to remember, oh, I have to remember, just write it down and then go back to sleep. Because if you're that. stuck, I got to remember, I got to remember, you're not sleeping. <laughs> and actually, let me look in, I think it was this book. Yeah. The, the foreword for Partners oh, yeah. in Everything, yeah. I got up and it's in here at two something, yeah, the preface, two something in the morning mm -hmm. and wrote the preface to the book because I couldn't sleep. And <laughs> it was a matter of getting it done. And mm -hmm. idea, I've had, and I've written things down in the middle of the night. And then in the morning, I was like, I can't read a darn thing of what I wrote. I've also had the, when someone schedules time with us, we use a, a URL. It's howtogetthereFaster.com because hmm. that's what people want when they have a, hire a business coach. They want to get there faster. Yeah. And I had that idea in the middle of the night. So hmm. I trotted downstairs, checked who <laughs> is. And actually, I, what I wanted was gettherefaster.com, but a bicycle cup shop owned it. Is that not the best thing ever? Somebody else got so, the same idea at three in the morning. <laughs> I think it was great. How to get there faster. I settled for that. Woke Sharon up in the middle of the night. Guess what? Oh, <laughs> it, was, it was boundaries. Yes, we do not. One of the one of the things we talk about in partners and everything is where are your boundaries? And mm. some of the couples we interviewed, they don't talk about business over the threshold, like whatever the threshold is. So, so mm. some of them are over the, right, when you cross the business door into the yeah. house. Okay, so yeah. that's the threshold. Some of them are the threshold is the bedroom, right? You can talk about it anywhere in the house, but as soon as we get to the bedroom, that's it, we're done. Yeah. We just don't have that. I'd be inviting Sharon out to the to the mother and babe, come to the kitchen come with me. Hallway. Hey, could you come out here for just a second? I just want to talk to you about some five things. It's fine. It, it'll be quick, I promise. <laughs> Actually, I would lure her out. Oh my God, babe, one of the cats is sick. I would. That's how I would get her oh. out of the room. Just kidding. <laughs> but as long as you're here, I have an idea for boot camp. You really don't need a rule if there's a disagreement, right? If one yeah. of you need needs it to the bedroom, for example, to be clear then you need the rule if you both agree you don't need a rule so we both agree so we actually don't have that rule we probably would if we had kids then i i probably would feel stronger that we need that kind of a rule but yeah. we don't the cats don't care what we're talking about <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and if you work, <laughs> yeah and if you don't work together with your partner spouse significant other or everything else it, it doesn't it rarely comes up but we do work together we are partners in everything and that's such a great, you underscore a great point too, and how the boundaries you set actually enable your freedom. It's a really easy trap people fall into. They think of those two concepts as working against each other when in fact that they're designed to work together. The boundaries you set are what enables you to be as free as you'd like to be and do the things you want to do together. Absolutely. When, and it works that way with kids, right? Mm -hmm. The kids need that structure so that they can flourish. Your relationship does too. If there's a disagreement, if you don't, if you agree, then you don't need the rule. Kevin, when do you work when you go on vacation? No. In fact, but I used to allow certain things to bleed in on the boundaries. And that's how I, that's how I would think of it to myself, too. Things bleeding in on the boundaries. And now when I take time away from work, I set I do everything that I can to set things up to where I'm not going to be needed. All like obligations are taken care of. Anybody who might need any information from me has some other place to go set up the out of office message or whatever. And I, 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 I turn off all the notifications on my devices, any devices that might be around me while I'm in this vacation spot or even just like a time off. And then I just let it, I release it. And that, that releasing, wow. that took, those, those muscles were underdeveloped to say the least. And that took years to even get to the point now where I can pull it off okay and not feel my leg vibrating and thinking it's a phone, but yeah. really it's just like a muscle vibrating. Right See, we, we're... That would be difficult for us. Right. Uh, first of all, most of the time when we go on vacation, it's on a cruise. And quite often we invite clients on the cruise so we can, we can all, all write, write a portion of it off. Smart. Check with your accountant before you do this. Yeah, of course. But <laughs> if whether there are or aren't clients on the cruise, we have figured it out. All right. We take X amount of time in the morning and X amount of time in the afternoon to check email. And then we put it all away. So during the day, we can go do touristy things. After yep. we check it in the evening, we can go to dinner and then that's it. And it used to be, so before we started working together, I actually worked at a job out of the house yeah. and it would bug me that he wasn't unplugged during vacation time. 
But then when I joined the company, it was like, oh, if we're not plugged in, then nothing gets done. There's nobody, it's, we're the company. So therefore the rule was, okay, so an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening and the rest of the time it's vacation time. And we give our clients. Oh, they get plenty of warning. Way enough warning. <laughs> they all know when we're going. And they're, they're all really good about it, really. We, we rarely have an, oh my goodness, emergency, but we do check just to make mm-hmm. sure that there isn't an emergency. I feel like you like exemplify exactly like why your clients are with you in the first place is like you have this, you have these core concepts, you really understand how things work in business and in relationships and in life. And you've created a a tailored solution for your life while also having a really like systematized framework that you can, again, coach people (laughs) to like help them figure out what's going to work best for them within these certain rules and boundaries. And what's the rules you're going to have? You have, you have seven kids, my God, I'm so sorry. And congratulations. Let's talk about how your life, how your best life looks in the context of all this and how your business thrives. And so you get, you really do seem to, again, we're, we've been talking for 20 minutes on a podcast, but you seem to exemplify the kind of tailored, executed lifestyle that people are going to be coming to you looking for coaching and how to find for themselves. <laughs> we, we try and wait, do or do not, there is no try. We work it hard. To model what it is that we teach. We do, we do work at practicing what we teach. Yeah, it shows. We're not perfect, we're not perfect we're, but we're, we're human. Yeah. So we're not perfect. But That's part of the model. Perfe- perfection is not part of any successful model. <laughs> we are perfectly imperfect. Yeah. There you go. Well, shoot, I like, I clearly, as I said at the beginning, and I'm even more so now, I'm just quite charmed by both of you. And I could just sit here and just talk about life and, and, and business and everything all day. But when we're done with the podcast, we can just, when we're done with the podcast, we can just go over time. We don't care if anybody, honestly, don't care if anyone else is listening. We're fine, Kevin. A little more chit chat offline, but before I hit that stop record button, where can the audience, where can people find out more about you, who you are, what you do? Where can they get your books? Where can they hire you for coaching? Where can they just find out what you're up to to next week, which cruises you're taking? Like, where can they just find out more if they want to, if they want to find out more? (laughs) Okay. Let's take the easy one first. We're not really sure of the next cruise. It's going to be early 24. Sometime between April and September. Yeah. So that's when the next cruise is. Not sure which one it is. Yeah. It'll be on Princess, though. (laughs) It will be on Princess because we have a credit to use. Long story. (laughs) Nice. Okay. That's the easy one. If you have 30 minutes to chat about strategy, whatever's going going on, uh, you go to howtogettherefaster.com. It'll ask you a couple of questions just so we can be ready for you and makes your time most valuable. Our next, our boot camps aren't until next March, so don't worry about that. Uh, just go to uloftcreative.com. Here's, tell you what, here's, let's give you something free. But we have to make it interesting. <laughs> if you send us an email, you have to tell them the email address. Info at Uloft Creative, that's Y-U-L-O-F-F Creative. It'll be in the show notes. And if you tell us you've listened to another one of Kevin's podcasts. At least one. You have to give us a one or two sentence podcast report. What it was about, what you liked most. I like and it. we will check. We'll send it to Kevin and say, is this real? <laughs> if you do that, you get, let's see, which books do we talk about? We talked about three different books. Do they get their choice? <laughs> which? Yeah, no. part two, part four checklist, and then the partners and. In- yeah, we're going to send you the three books that we talked about. Partners and Everything. Your Couple's Guide to Running a Successful Business Without Ruining Your Life, The Marketing Checklist 2, because that came out on our 20th anniversary, 49 More Simple Ways to Master Your Marketing, and The Marketing Checklist for Your Guide for Overthinking and Overwhelmed Entrepreneurs. I'm going to be mailing you what copy of this, Kevin, just kind of. Oh, nice. Good, it's because a yes. a hard copy. So <laughs> you'll get the, if you send us that, you get all three, you get the, the e-versions, we'll send those back to you probably with some other cool stuff because that's just who you are that's, that's how you that's how you move through the world just throwing just tossing some cool extras into everything you do uh, <laughs> there's a term i learned from a, a friend he was running really swanky hotels in los angeles and he always wanted to start a restaurant and he said one of the things that we will do is we will have a lanya Yes, it's a Creole term for a little something unexpected extra, like something between the courses you get just a little something, a yogurt something. Unexpected unexpected. thing. So 
I've embraced that term, you know, that concept of a lanyard, send something unexpected. Yeah. You know, just I a like little that. something extra and just go a little further extra. You know, that old expression, there, there's no traffic on the extra mile. It's, good one. it's yeah. another way of doing that. I like that. I like that quite a bit. All of my most successful uh, overtures of love or regard or care have been like, they haven't been like the big grand gesture on the birthday or the anniversary or the whatever. It's always been like the random Tuesday where I just decided to get flowers or the random Thursday where it's like I popped over by the bookstore and hey, I picked up that book you've been talking about. Or and, you, and stood like, outside, you stood outside with the boom, <laughs> which is now really just like your phone. Yeah, with the phone. An external speaker. But I've still got the, the trench coat with the rolled up sleeves. Exactly. You know, so, you know, certain things never go out of style, right? <laughs> okay, so for those of you that didn't get that reference, you're too young <laughs> to be listening. The movie is Say Anything. And it's, it's both Kuzak siblings are in that movie. Mm -hmm. Looking baby faced, just so young. Oh my God. <laughs> right. I just I actually just rewatched that a little while ago. Oh, so. lovely. I said, yeah, Cameron Crowe's, I think, first. First movie? I can't remember. Anyway, what? my brain's not going into IMDb mode. So I got that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here's your bonus for listening to, to today. IMDb.com. <laughs> if you want to, if you have arguments about who was in what, it's the internet movie database, IMDb.com. <laughs> you will love it. It's, and it's a rabbit it's hole. It's a rabbit hole. <laughs> it's almost, that, uh -huh. that's almost as big a rabbit hole as text.com. Oh, yeah. But I, have, I haven't thought about that website in a while. I'm like, oh, yeah. I've definitely lost some hours. Just yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't, so speaking of speaking of losing time, I should wrap us up. Thank you, Sharon Hank. Thank you so much for just thank a delightful you. episode. It's been really fun. And thank you to the audience. I hope you had just like ten percent as much fun as I think we had because then you're having a great day. You know what to do next. Links what they in the really want to do what they really want to do is is answer. They have comments. Oh my god, I love that movie or something like that. <laughs> Do you want to talk and about the work of Cameron Crowe, Kevin, young John Cusack? <laughs> and your comments to Kevin, he'll get into a conversation with you and you can have a great time. <laughs> Find us on LinkedIn. Links to everything that's relevant. It will be in the show notes. Thank you so <laughs> much to the audience. Thank you for sharing some time with us. We'll talk to you again very soon.